Today's video is proudly sponsored by Linode. Linode has been doing cloud computing since 2003, which is actually before Amazon Web Services was even a thing. On Linode's platform, you can get your server up and running in minutes. And they include all the popular distributions, such as Debian, Fedora, Ubuntu, and get this, even Arch Linux. And let's be honest, what could be better than a Linux-focused cloud server provider that lets you tell all of your friends, I run Arch? Linode has multiple server plans available to make any app scalable and flexible. You could use it to host a blog, a VPN server, a Minecraft server, and much more. In fact, Linode is the platform of choice to host the entire web presence of Learn Linux TV. In addition, Linode offers 24 by 7 365 support, regardless of plan size, so you can get help from a live person when you need it. New users can get started right now with $100 towards your new account, and I highly recommend you check them out because Linode is awesome. And now, let's get started with today's video. Hello again, everyone, and welcome back to Learn Linux TV. In today's episode of Linux Essentials, we're going to talk about account expiration. Basically, the ability to make a user account expire and or a password expire. The thing is, users are the greatest thing about our job, and sometimes not the greatest thing if they get up to mischief, but we definitely need to keep an eye on the people that are using our servers and make sure that any accounts that aren't needed are closed down, or locked, and passwords expire if we have any policies at our company that require that. And in this video, we're going to take a look at the Sage command, which is going to help us actually set expiration dates for passwords and entire accounts. So let's get started. The primary command that we're going to be using in today's video is the Sage command. And it's spelled like that, C-H-A-G-E. And what the Sage command allows us to do is set expiration information for a user. For example, we could set up the user to be locked out after a certain time, or even be required to change their password after a certain time. Now, to support this video, I've created three different users. These three down here at the bottom, Neo, Trinity, and Morpheus. As far as how I created those users, I have an entire video that goes over user management, so if you want a refresher on how to add, remove, and manage user accounts, then definitely check out that video. I'll leave a card for that video right about here. But anyway, we have these three users, and these are going to be our example users for the content in today's video. So I mentioned the Sage command. What can it do for us? Well, one of the things that we could do with the Sage command is set the expiration date for a user's account. And it looks something like this. We need to start the command with sudo because we will need root privileges or access to sudo in order to execute this command. After all, the sage command allows us to make system changes, specifically user changes, and anything system related, we will need sudo for that, or like I mentioned, root privileges. So we'll run sage, dash capital E. Next, we'll type in a date. So I typed in October 1st of 2021. And then finally, we give it the name of the user that we want to manage. So I'm going to change the expiration date for Neo. So like I mentioned, one of the things that the Sage command allows us to do is set the expiration date for a user. And the syntax is fairly straightforward. We have the dash capital E option right here. And that's the option that allows us to set an expiration date. We set the expiration date to October 1st of 2021. And the user that we're applying that expiration date to is this user right here. And what this means is that after October 1st, Neo will not be allowed to log into the system. If this user does want to log into the system after that date, they're gonna to have to contact the system administrator, which could be you, and then ask for permission to regain access to the server. So we were able to set an expiration date for Neo, but how do we actually check what the expiration date is for a user? And for that, we can run sage-l, along with the username. For this as well, we will need sudo. And as you can see right here, I have all of the relevant information pertaining to Neo's password right here. 
We can see the date of the last password change. We can also see when the password expires, which in this case is never. We can see when the password is going to be inactive. But more importantly, we can see the expiration date for the user right here. Now, notice that the password itself doesn't have an expiration date, but the account itself has an expiration date. So what we've done is we've effectively set an expiration date or a stop date for this particular user. So now what I'm going to do is go ahead and set an expiration date for the other users as well. And I'm just picking some random dates here. And now I've set expiration dates for those users as well. And you might be wondering, why would I want to do this? Well, if you think about it, some companies out there, they might hire part-time or temporary workers, possibly contractors. And if a person is designated to be working for the company for a limited amount of time, then it actually makes sense to make their expiration date the same as their actual contract date. So for example, if an employee is going to be working for the company for 30 more days, then you can set the expiration date to make sure that individual is not able to access the Linux server beyond that date. And what that does is it helps you as the administrator remain in compliance with any user policies that might exist at your company. Now let's look at password expiration. Perhaps you want to make sure that your users are required to change their password after a certain number of days. And to do that, it's actually fairly easy. We have the dash M option, and what that allows us to do is set the number of days until the password expires. I'm going to set this one to 30, and I'm going to apply that to Trinity. And if we check the parameters for that user's account, we'll see that we now have an expiration date for that user's password. And right here, this field is set to seven. That's the number of days until the user is warned that their password is about to expire. Now, if for some reason you want to undo that, you can actually set the number of days to minus one. And now we can see that the password expires never. So as you can see, by changing the number of days until the password expires to minus one, you are removing the password expiration date. So now this particular user will not have to change their password. Now, another thing that you might want to consider is setting the number of days until a user is allowed to change their password again. Now, you might be thinking, what's the problem when it comes to allowing a user to change their password? The thing is, users are fairly sneaky, and they'll often try to override password policy. It's definitely a bad decision for a user to neglect the password policy, and what you can do as an administrator is you can actually set some values here with the sage command that's going to make it even harder for some users to neglect the policy. For example, if you have a policy where the user's password has to be different than the previous 10 passwords that they've used in the past, then what some users will do is change their password 10 times and then change it back to the original password. That way they could keep using the original password forever. So to help combat that, what we could do is run sudo and then sage dash lowercase m. I'll set that to seven. And I'll apply that to Morpheus. In fact, if that's actually the policy, what we'll want to do is apply that to everyone. And what the dash lowercase m option allows us to do is set the minimum number of days until that user is allowed to change their password again. So if Neo actually changes his password today, then he's not going to be allowed to change it again for seven more days. So if he wants to change his password 10 times and cycle back to the original password, He'll still be able to do that, it's just going to take a lot longer to do that. It's going to take something like 10 or 11 weeks. At that point, it's probably not really practical for the user to do that, and they'll likely give up. Of course, if the user needs to change their password earlier than that, for example, if there's a security concern, then what they can do is contact you as the administrator and have you help them change their password. But at the very least, by setting a minimum number of days, you are making it a lot less convenient for them to override the password policy. But anyway, with a minimum number of days set in between password changes, it suddenly becomes a lot less convenient for users to override the history policy. Now there's one last command that I want to give you guys in this video that's actually not related to the sage command, but it's a simple thing that doesn't really fit into its own video because it would be a super short video. 
But what I want to show you guys how to do is how to lock a user account immediately to make sure that the user is not able to sign in. Maybe you have reason to believe that a user account became compromised. If that's the case, then you definitely want to lock that user account until you finish your investigation. And for that, we'll actually use the passwd command, a command that we've used in other videos in this series, to change passwords. But one of the things that it allows us to do is actually lock a user account, and we can do that with dash L. So if I wanted to lock Trinity, for example, I'll include her name right here. So it says that the information has changed, and what I wanted to do was lock the account. Let's go ahead and try to sign into it now. And it's telling me that it failed. Let me try that one more time, just to make sure that I didn't fat finger the password or something. And it still failed. So as you can see, I wasn't able to log in to this particular user account, which means that the user has been successfully locked. So let's go ahead and unlock that account. I'll change the dash L to dash U. So as you can see, we went ahead and unlocked the user account. And let's see if we can go ahead and log into the user now. And as you can see, I was able to. So at this point, you know how to set the expiration information for the user and their password, but you also know how to lock the account and unlock it as well. So there you go. This was a bit of a quicker video than most in this series, and arguably something I probably could have gone over earlier in the series, but I definitely wanted to make sure that you guys were aware of how to set expirations on Linux accounts, and hopefully now you have a good handle on that. Let me know what you thought of this video, or any other Linux-related opinion that you might have down in the description below this video. I look forward to hearing what you guys have to say. If you found this video helpful, please click that like button. That lets YouTube know that you want to see more awesome Linux content just like this. And I'll see you again very soon. Thanks for watching.